So here we are with a recent acquisition of mine. It's the Belova Accutron, the original. Um, this is known as the Space View version because you can see through the dial, which is a very important feature that we'll get to later. But to start, this was released in 1960, which importantly was about a decade before Quartz, and this is the second um, electronic movement ever designed. The other one was by Hamilton that was released, um, and it's a tuning fork. So in the center of the watch, you see uh, there's a tuning fork, and then each little edge of the fork is run by those copper coils on inside of each one. It runs at 360 hertz, so that's 360 vibrations per second. And this tuning fork movement became so well known for Belova that it's now the logo for the brand. Um, the inventor of this movement was uh, named Max Hetzel, and he was born in Basel, Switzerland, which uh, for all the uh, watch aficionados out there, they know how important Basel is every year, right? Now, this was also important, not just because it was electric, but because it was very accurate. It uh, would lose or gain within two seconds a day. So that's very, very accurate compared to the mechanical watches of the time and even today. And um, it's a very nice movement idea because with a mechanical watch, when you wind it up all the way, there's more tension in that spring, so it puts out more power. And then it tends to lose power as it uh, reaches zero. So there's not a constant amount of force through the movement. However, with this, there's a very constant 360 hertz, so it always stays the same amount. Now, as I said before, this is the space view version of the watch. Now, this is pretty interesting because they actually weren't designed to be sold like this. The idea was that they'd have a space view that was in the front of the jewelry store and that would make people want to come in, but then they'd be selling regular watches inside. However, a lot of people would say, hey, that watch at the window was really interesting. I want to buy that one. So what they did is they sent out a bunch of conversion kits to the jewelers and said, hey, if someone wants a space view, um, just rip out the dial, put on this new crystal, and those crystals would have the marking, the dial markings on the inside of the crystal. Now this is a factory made space view, which means that it's not a conversion. And these were starting in 1962. So two years after people started being interested in the space view, they started releasing them in large amounts. And these ones have the chapter ring here. And so there's no markings on the actual crystal itself. Now, because of this history, it leads to a lot of fakes today, because what people will do is they'll take a perfectly good Accutron, and then they'll rip out the dial, put in some space view like hands, and then put on an aftermarket crystal, and then call it a space view when it was never rid originally a space view. Um, and that's like 99% of eBay listings are these space view conversions from non-original space views, which is kind of sad when you buy one on eBay and then you realize that you got tricked. So kind of letting you into that right now. Now this one is pretty interesting because it's got this little resistor between uh, four and five and it's not, it's not like most models. Most models have uh, one or two resistors there that look like how they standardly look these days, which is to say uh, long columns with little stripes on them that tell you how strong it is. This one's just a steel barrel, and so I'm thinking they're probably custom made by Belova. I talked to a guy who's an expert in these Accutrons, and he said it does mean that they were uh, a very early model. So this was made anywhere from between uh, 1960 to 1964. However, since they only started making these chapter rings at the very end of 1962, this is probably like a 1963 model, which is to say pretty early on. Now, you can also tell that it's pretty early on because of the back. When you look at the back, you see that it says waterproof right here. Now, there's two reasons why this signifies that it's early on. One is that watches no longer can say waterproof on them. It's not allowed by whatever trade commission, whatever, because there's no such thing as a waterproof watch. So now it has to say water resistant and then how resistant it is to how many meters or such. Now, back then you could just put waterproof on it and that's what they did. However, these watches they found were very much not waterproof. <laughs> they weren't even close to waterproof. So they switched it to water resistant 
And then eventually they just removed water resistant entirely because it just wasn't true. So this is another sign that this is an early model. So everything about this watch lines up to make me think that it's real. Um, now let's, let's talk about the movement again. So what's running this is a battery, of course, and the battery is a 1.5 volt these days. But back when this was made, it required a 1.3 volt battery. Now, since you can't get a 1.3 volt battery, uh, some people have been making these converted batteries out of 1.5s that will give off 1.3 volts. And the reason why is because even though normally you can put in a 1.5 and it has no problem, sometimes the tuning fork will start running really fast when you put in a 1.5 and your Accutron will not be accurate at all. Now the reason why is because there's these little notches at the bottom of the tuning fork and those were hand filed on either side to make sure that it was running at 360 hertz. Now if they were on the lower end of that tolerance, removed a little bit less, then it might have worked with 1.3, but when you put in the 1.5 then it starts running fast. So. When you get an Accutron, that may be something that you run into. You can get a converted battery, um, but most of them actually run with the 1.5 volt. Now, this watch is also very important because it went into space. It's in several satellites, so there are Accutrons uh, in satellites around us now. And I think one of the reasons for that is because it's an electronic movement. So they were able to fit solar panels to them and then keep them running continuously. Whereas if you put like an Omega Speedmaster, which is known as the Moonwatch, how would you wind an Omega Speedmaster or read the time off of it in a satellite? That would be very difficult slash impossible. So these fit the, uh, the space industry much better. So there's a lot of them in space. Um, some people think that there's some of them on the moon, on like the uh, lander and such. And so they are a bit of a space watch and they actually were put against the Omega Speedmaster in NASA's trials to decide what the official space watch would be. However, the Speedmaster, despite having a lot more moving parts and stuff, was just made better. And so it passed the trials. This actually failed the trials and uh, that's why the Accutron was never the official watch, even though it's so accurate. So Belova kinda, kinda messed up on that one, frankly. Now, let's talk about my impressions of this watch. Um, I, my initial impressions, I would say, are that it's awesome. <laughs> I mean, I really love this watch. Now, it is a loomed watch, and um, the loom is, you know, many, many, many years old now. It's over 50 years old. And just the, the micro amount of water that's gotten into this from humidity, um, you know, attacks the loom and it becomes weaker over time. And this is true for pretty much all watches. And that's why loom patinas in general. Um, the loom still works on this one, so it hasn't been totally ruined, but it is quite weak, quite weak loom. Um, and it's also hand painted if you look around the chapter ring. And so it kind of looks messy, actually. And uh, that's another way to tell if you see one of these chapter rings on an eBay listing and the loom looks really clean on it. That means it wasn't hand painted, which means that it's actually fake. You want it to look worse, not better. Now, when you put on this watch, I really like this aftermarket band that I got for it because it matches the uh, circuit boardy type look of the watch but it's actually quite the small watch. It's a uh, 34.5 about millimeters. And so it's, it's a little guy. So if you're a huge dude, this might not fit your wrist so well. I've got a relatively big wrist and I think it still looks good because the band looks like it's kind of part of the watch. I find that it kind of expands its size somehow <laughs> mentally. Um, and if you're a lady, of course, I think this watch could be pretty sweet as well. Um, now, I find that this watch is a pretty darn good conversation piece. Uh, people can uh, ask you about the watch, and uh, it's a pretty fun one to have on your wrist. If you like, if you like talking about watches, this one's one where uh, somebody might actually ask you about your watch. Um, now, that being said, 
Uh, there is one more thing that I'd like to talk about, which is that if you look on each side, there is uh, no crown. And that's because the way that you set the time is you flip it over and you fit your finger in this little guy and you pull it out. And then when you rotate it, then that moves the hands. And the second hand will jump or stop while you're moving the hands just because you're uh, messing with the gear train there a little bit or whatever. Um, then it starts working again just fine. And uh, yeah, I think that's mostly what I wanted to say about the Accutron. Extremely interesting watch. It's entered the collection. This one's never going to leave, uh, you know, because it's a very early factory made space view, guaranteed, genuine, beautiful watch. Uh, in good condition with that waterproof <laughs> little joke on the back. Um, excellent watch. Uh, if you have any questions or any comments, you can write them down below. If you'd like to see more interesting watch videos, of course, you can subscribe and those will come your way. And as always, I'll see you next video.